Hi and welcome to the 28th video in our C Sharp for Beginners tutorial series. This is going to be the last video in our collections and data structures section. Uh, so today we're going to be taking a look at queues. Queues are very similar to stacks that we just saw in the last video. The only thing is about queues is they are first in, first out, very similar to how you would treat uh, like inventory, uh, refreshments at like the grocery store or at a restaurant or in an actual queue or like a line like if you're getting in line to pay for something or getting in line to buy tickets uh, that is an example of a queue you are the first in line you are the first out of the line uh, so that is how it works so let's actually go ahead and let's see how we can actually do this in c sharp so as you probably guessed uh, the first part is creating our queue here which is very similar to the stack uh, we are going to do a queue and then the greater than less than symbols and we can put in our variable type so we're going to make a queue of integers and we're just going to name that int queue and we are going to make that equal to a new queue of type integers and then similarly to how we uh, had in the stack we can actually add items into our queue so to add an item here into our queue it would just be int queue dot n queue and then you can go ahead and put in the integer that we want in there. Uh, so we're actually going to go ahead and put in a few items here. Uh, so we're going to put one, two, three, and four, and five. So we're going to put a total of six items. And we put in integers zero through five. Uh, so in theory, the way that we've talked about it, uh, the first item that should come off is going to be zero. So the way that we can actually, uh, so once again, there's two things that we can do. We can actually take the item immediately off of the queue or just take a look at who is or what is the first in line in the queue and then display that to the screen. So let's actually just go ahead and let's just look to see what is there. Um, so let's just say console uh, dot right line here and let's do an interpolated string and let's say the first in line is and then let's go ahead and let's put in our curly brackets and then int q dot uh, peak. Uh, now what we could actually do in theory is because what happens is if we actually put this line before we actually put any items here, we will get an error saying that the queue is empty because we're trying to peak on a empty queue. So what we should actually do here is we should actually wrap this in an if statement. So actually, before we wrap that in an if statement, let's go ahead and let's just create a temporary integer. So let's do an int temp. And then here we're going to do an if int q dot try peak. And then we're going to out that to temp. So if it succeeds, we are going to go ahead and we are going to do a console dot right line peak else what we are going to do is console dot right line and we are just going to go ahead and write the queue is currently empty all right and then we are going to go ahead and we are actually just going to copy this here we're going to paste that right underneath as well so let's see what happens here so as we can see, before we actually load up our queue, we will actually see that our queue is empty. And then once we've put in our items here, we see the first in line is zero. So that is perfect. So let's actually go ahead and let's just write console.write line. And let's put in now emptying the queue. All right, so the way that we will actually empty out this queue here, so there's two ways that we've seen this. Uh, so let's just simply take out the first item here. Um, so what we're going to say is we're just going to do an if uh, int queue. And instead of a try peak this time, it's going to be a try dq. And we are going to out that to temp as well. And then in here, if it succeeds, we are going to go ahead and do a console dot right line. And let's say, uh, let's do an interpolated string once again here. The item out of the queue 
is and let's do temp oh and actually for this is actually not going to be peak this is actually going to be temp here sorry about that uh, and this should also be temp because it's going to be peaking. Um, I mean, it would work, uh, but it should actually just be temp. Because here, if I did a try DQ and then try DQ again, uh, it would definitely not work. Or if I did a DQ here after trying the DQ, that would actually DQ two items. Uh, so always just make sure to always use that temp value here. Uh, so let's just run this again. Uh, oops. Uh, so here we are. So the first item in line is zero. Now emptying the queue, the items out of the queue is zero. Uh, now, of course, we don't really know if it actually worked. So let's copy paste this line here that just kind of looks. And let's see what it is. So here it is. So the queue is currently empty. The first in line is zero. Now emptying the queue, the items out of the queue is zero. And then the first in line is now one as we've expected because uh, we've only taken out the first one. So what we would want to do here is actually do a loop where we actually constantly just uh, keep emptying that queue till it runs out. So there are two ways. Uh, we've seen two ways uh, with the stack. They are pretty much identical for the queue as well. Uh, so we're just going to be taking a look at uh, one of them here, uh, which is probably the more uh, unique one to queues. Uh, you can, of course, do a while count is greater than zero and then just keep dequeuing the items. Uh, but what we're actually going to say is while int q dot try dq out temp. So while we can actually dequeue an item into the temp variable, we are going to say console dot right line and let's do an interpolated string item removed from the queue and let's do our curly brackets here and let's put in temp and let's see what this looks like now so here we have the queue is currently empty and that is that first line here before we actually put any items in our queue and then we are saying that the first in line is zero because we put in zero first and then we then go ahead and we try to uh, empty the queue so while it succeeds to dq we will actually go ahead and dq it and display the dequeued item so we have zero one two three and four and then we go ahead and we try to see what's in the queue and the queue is currently empty so that is pretty much it for queues and stacks and the different types of collections and data structures. Now, there are a few that we might not have actually seen, uh, but the, those ones are probably not used as often if you're making uh, projects often enough. Uh, you might need uh, to use them, uh, but for the most part, for the projects that we're going to be working on in this uh, and a lot of the majority of the projects that you might work on as well, uh, these should cover all the cases that you're going to encounter. Uh, so that should be about it for um, the collections and data structures. Uh, so we're going to be taking a little break from C Sharp uh, over the next little while, uh, just to give some people some time to digest these. Uh, and then we're going to get into some projects with C Sharp. Uh, and then we're also going to start getting into the GUIs. Uh, but I do want to start uh, focusing a little bit back more with PowerShell. Uh, so hopefully you guys will stay tuned for that as well. And then we're going to be combining C Sharp and PowerShell very shortly afterwards uh, to show you guys the power of combining the two languages together. Uh, it's not really combining the two languages, but using some REST PS uh, that uses PowerShell and then using some C Sharp to interact with it. So hopefully you guys are enjoying this series so far. If you guys have any questions or comments, please let me know down below. I'll do my best to answer you guys directly. Um, if it's something that a lot of people can benefit, I will definitely make a video on that as well. Be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and also be sure to hit that notification bell to be notified when that next video comes out.
and I will see you guys on the next video.